if we are being examined today concerning a good deed done to a crippled man, by what means has he been healed? Let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him this man is standing before you well. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. What a great confession we have there in Acts. Peter is described as being filled with the Holy Spirit. And when Peter is filled with the Holy Spirit, he speaks very plainly. He speaks clearly and he speaks absolutely. There's no wandering or wanting in his voice when he says, rulers of the people and elders. If we are being examined today concerning a good deed done by a cripple, by what means this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all people of Israel that by the name of Jesus of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him this man is standing before you well. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. When I read that for the second time, it seems as if there is no guile in Peter. It seems as if Peter's got it all together. Peter, who made this eloquent speech, of course being filled by the Holy Spirit, is exact in his confession. He doesn't waste any words. He's like a surgeon. Where he cuts into the quick, he operates, and he gets out of there. Right to the point. And if all that you knew about Peter was what he says here in Acts, you would think that Peter was not only a great man, but a perfect one. Because his confession is so perfect. Peter, apostle. Peter, confessor. Peter, the stone, the rock that Christ would build his church upon. Peter, the great disciple. Peter, the martyr. Peter, the one who rebukes the rulers, the people, and the elders, saying, Jesus of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, that is to say, do, you did your worst, and yet God did his best. What you meant for evil to be crucified, God meant to be the forgiveness of sins. And not only that, God the Father would not see his son remain dead, but would raise him again on the third day and say, what you meant for evil, I have made good. What you have corrupted in my people, I have made them whole. Peter, the one who says so eloquently, Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders. And that, build, and that stone has become the cornerstone. The cornerstone is that which the entire building is built upon. If that cornerstone was taken away, the house would fall. That's the entire point of a cornerstone. In other words, without Christ, the building will fall. Without Christ, we have no faith. Without Christ, we've got nothing. And so, while empires come and empires go, leaders come and leaders go, presidents will come and presidents will go, governors will come and governors will go, county officials will come and county officials will go, but Jesus the Christ remains forever. Every one of us, a brick that is built 
on the cornerstone that if he was not there, we would all fall. Peter teaches us this. Peter, in whom there is no God, Saint Peter, the eloquent. Except, if you look on the front of your bulletins, you will see a seal with a rooster. Or as scripture says, the cock that crows. Peter, the denier. Peter, who thrice denied Christ, and the cock crowed, and he wept bitterly. Now who wants to be like Peter? It's sort of like Thomas. St. Thomas made one of the greatest confessions that Scripture has ever seen. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Perfect confession of faith. But does he get Thomas the Confessor? No. He gets Doubting Thomas. And forever he will be known as Doubting Thomas. Peter makes one of the greatest confessions that a man can make. You are the Christ. And yet he denied him three times. But we don't even have to look that far. We just need to look a little farther in our gospel text. Peter. The one who is eloquent, has, has in him no guile, keeps on messing up. Time after time after time. It's as if Peter is thick. He doesn't get it. To be fair, we probably wouldn't either. Because faith has to be put in us in order to make that confession. But just a little bit after that confession of faith, you are the Christ, he says this. Takes Jesus, the Son of Man, over to the side. And what does he say? I'm grateful for you dying and rising for me. That's not what he says. He rebukes him, saying, you are wrong. You will not die. I will not hear of it. And when the time came for Jesus to be arrested, he cut a guy's ear off. It's in the realm of possibility as Christians that we make bad decisions. I can't think of many other things worse than cutting a guy's ear off when he came for Jesus. But what a beautiful analogy that is. Cut his ear off, Jesus put his ear on. How beautiful is that as a Christian? Isn't that what we do? We cut our own ears off, we cut our neighbor's ears off, Jesus comes and he puts them back on. He's a healer. He's a lover of our souls. And he's also a rebuker. He looks to Peter and he says, get behind me, Satan. The one who just made the perfect confession, he calls Satan. Why would he call him Satan? It's simple. There's only one person that wants to keep Jesus from the cross. And that is Satan. Because if Satan can keep Jesus from the cross, you will have no forgiveness. Satan is the only one who desires to keep Christ from the cross. And so when you hear of people not wanting the corpus on the cross or the body on the cross, say this, only one person doesn't want the Son of God on the cross, and that is the devil. In other words, or in addition to, any words that you say that would keep Christ off the cross or would not be Christ crucified, you are speaking the words of Satan. You are speaking the words of the devil. Peter did it. And that's why he got called Satan. Because he was rebuking Christ when Christ said, I will be killed. I will be rejected by the elders, handed over, killed, and will rise again. 
It's as if Peter just doesn't get it. Even though he is Peter who has no guile. Peter the eloquent. Saint Peter the confessor. Even Peter the denier. Peter, as I said before, throughout Scripture, you can see him mess up time after time after time. He just doesn't seem to get it when it comes to Christ. That's why we are Peter. Tell me this, in your entire life, have you not sinned against God? In your entire life, have you not betrayed Him? In your entire life, do you not have pet sins? Do you not have things that plague you? Do you not have things that distract you from Christ? I know that I do. I know that with depression and anxiety comes a non-reliance on Christ. Mental health, non-reliance on Christ. And the only reason I use this example is because it's a, it's a, it's a condition that's within us. Even when we can't help it, we're still sinning. We all have these things inside of us. They manifest in different sins, but the condition is a sinner. Peter knew this. Peter denied. Peter, in whom there is no guile. Peter, even he, Inflicted with depression, ran and wept bitterly. So did Judas. What's the difference? Repentance. Forgiveness. That's what separates us from the pagans. That's what separates Peter from the Judases. That's what separates us from the world. And so with Peter, who eventually would get it. Peter, who with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, laud and magnify the glorious name of Jesus Christ. He gets it now. Ward Yunker gets it now. And one day, as we see through the mirror blurrily, soon we shall see with new eyes Christ the crucified and Christ the risen. Christ the one who makes Peter saintly. Christ the one who makes you saintly. Christ the one who makes me saintly. Even a sinner such as me. So I say this to you, all of you, by faith, if you were to follow Christ, deny yourself, pick up the cross, and follow Christ. Let us be little Peters, little martyrs, little lovers of Christ, for Christ certainly by his action and by his deeds and by his words is a lover of our very souls. Thanks be to God. Amen. And now may the peace which surpasses all human understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus now and forever. Amen. Amen.